At a quarter past with this uh, MSNBC campaign alert, there you see the controversial pastor of the Cornerstone Church, Pastor John Hagee. He is addressing issues, uh, saying he is a staunch defender of Israel and he has been slurred in the media because his words condoning the Holocaust have been taken out of context. Let's listen to what he has to say right now. Be confused with an effort to excuse evil. Many have wondered where God was during the Holocaust. But I think the more important question is what we will do here on earth to make sure that there will never be another Holocaust. We must give meaning to the words, never again through our actions. It is to this effort, this effort to fight anti-Semitism and to support Israel. This effort to promote the continued growth and development. All right, and there you hear the pastor still uh, continuing to defend uh, his words in the past, uh, alleging that the media has taken things out of context. Let's bring in a couple guys to talk about this and other campaign related news. Doug McKinnon is a Republican strategist, a former communications director for Senator Bob Dole. Keith Boykin is a Democratic strategist. So, welcome to the both of you. Um, and, uh, Doug, I just want to get your, your thoughts on what you're hearing by the, the pastor right now and the fact that uh, Senator John McKinnon. Has put significant distance between himself and this man. Uh, how's this all going to play out, especially now that John Hagee's taking to the podium himself? Well, I think it's exactly what uh, David Axelrod was talking about earlier. It really is a little bit of a silly season. Alex, I was just at the National Press Club uh, before this where I was listening to my old boss, Bob Dole, talk about our wounded warriors, talk about the treatment they're getting, talk about Memorial Day. So I think we have to keep a lot of this in context. But I do agree that John McCain had to put a lot of distance between himself and Reverend Hagee. I think Barack Obama was correct to put distance between himself and Reverend Wright. This is a silly season. I would like both candidates to talk more about the issues and less about these side issues. Okay, Keith, before we get to some uh, more meaty issues then, if you will, any, any thoughts real quick? Yeah, I think there's a huge double standard here, Alex. You know, I, when, when, when we had Jeremiah Wright on TV a few weeks ago, there was wall-to-wall -wall coverage of everything he said. He was at the NAACP speech in Detroit. He went to the National Press Club. It was wall-to-wall -wall coverage, every single word. I just think it's completely inconsistent. A huge double standard, especially for Republicans to say that this, this, this doesn't deserve attention. When we have so much attention about what Jeremiah Wright was saying. It's, a, it's another example of how I think Barack Obama is being treated unfairly compared to what John McCain is getting. Okay, well, let's talk about uh, whether or not the battle's fair between uh, Barack Obama and John McCain, because politics have quickly become somewhat personal, personal rather, in this newest battle. Obama had criticized the presumptive GOP nominee for exposing, rather, opposing an expansion of veterans' education benefits, drawing a blistering response from the Arizona senator. Let's listen. I respect uh, Senator John McCain's service to our country. He is one of those heroes of which I speak. Uh, but I can't understand why he would line up behind the president in his opposition to this GI Bill. I don't know if the American people will judge Senator Obama as to whether he has military experience or not, but I think they may judge him as to whether he has experience and knowledge to make the kind of judgment necessary to care for our veterans. And that was not the last word, Doug, as you well know. McCain brought up the military experience issue again a bit later, saying that he would not accept a lecture from someone who did not serve. So do you think this is part of a McCain strategy to, to get himself under Obama, Obama's skin just a little bit and force him to play in his McCain sandbox? I mean, that might be, Alex, I don't pretend to speak for Senator McCain, but I think most Americans now really don't care whether you served in the military or not. You can certainly be a patriot without serving in the military. I think Senator McCain's point was that if this program went through, then it would encourage a lot of people serving now in uniform not to re-enlist, and that would be a problem for the United States down the line, and it's something that we have to look at. Well, Keith, I mean, if Doug's right here, McCain saying this bill is too expensive, that it will encourage mid-level officers to leave the military, why not really focus on that argument as opposed to criticizing Obama's lack of military experience? Well, I think you're right, Alex, and I think Doug is right. I don't know why John McCain is focusing on this military experience issue. Look at the current president. He had no military experience. He dodged the draft in Vietnam, as many people People already know. Look at the president before him. I mean, Mike, um, go back to Mike Dukakis in 1988. That's the campaign I worked on. Mike Dukakis had military experience. He lost. 1992, we have Bill Clinton. He didn't have military experience. He won. 2000, Bill Clinton had. 2000. I'm sorry. We have uh, George Bush, who has military experience, no military experience, and he and he wins. You know, it's hard to take, hard to make sense of this. I don't think the military experience argument really works anymore. And I think that it's kind of old school politics on the part of John McCain to use that right now. Hey, Keith. You know. As 
much as I love you saying I'm right, can I just say I was just saying I'm not weighing. I was just saying. Oh no, saying. no, right. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not accusing so, you of, take, of having an well, opinion. I'm sorry, red. Alex. Okay, that's cool. Okay. Um, Doug, here's what John McCain had to say yesterday about to Obama, and it seemed to take a page right out of Ronald Reagan's playbook. Let's listen. I admire and respect Senator Obama. For a young man with very little experience, he's done very well. So I appreciate, with his, with his very, very great lack of experience and knowledge of the issues, he's been very successful. Can he turn the age issue, Doug, to his advantage, do you think? Absolutely. And I think, Alex, he's relishing that fight. I think he wants it to be on, on that level. I think he wants Barack Obama and his campaign and his operatives to beat him up on age because every time he, he hears he's too old, he's going to talk about experience. And he wants that experience message to filter into the American electorate. So I think he's looking forward to it. Okay. Um, listen, guys, I'm out of time this segment. I'll keep it more balanced next. Uh, Keith, and begin with you. So uh, we'll thank you both, Doug McKinnon and Keith Boykin. Thanks so much.